How's it going, YouTube? On this week's episode, I have a mint condition Hammond B3 tone wheel organ from 1959. In fact, it is so mint condition, it has never been hooked to anything other than a Hammond tone cabinet. So today, I'm going to connect it to my Leslie 122, and I'm going to show you how I do it, so stick around. First off, I want to give a shout out to Bill Brown at bboregon.com. Check him out. He's got new and used parts for Hammond organs and Leslie's, and I should be able to take care of you. First, you're going to want to grab the kit to connect the organ. You're going to need the 428-8000NT is the connector kit. This is a reproduction of the original connector kit, and then a switch. The next step is going to be to prevent the cheek blocks from scratching up the sides of the organ when you open up the key bed. So I've got this cheap notebook here I found, and I'm gonna cut little sections out of it. I'm gonna get as much out of it as I can, and I'm gonna protect the sides when I open up the key bed. So here we go. There we go. Then you're gonna to wanna to install these on the sides here. Now I'm gonna remove the 9 16 inch bolts that will help me lift the key bed. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna take these screws out <clears throat> remove the drawbar assembly and flip this guy up. Cut these wedges to hold the key bed up. Now I'm going to mount the switch and feed it through. Now I need to remove the half inch bolts to hold the bottom manual in. There's one on each side. tab right here. I gotta unscrew to be able to lift the key bed. Two flathead screws. Now I just need a clear shot to run this wire back. And I've got it. I'm gonna take this. Now I'm done with the front. I'm gonna button it back up and then we'll flip around to the back side. I love the smell of a Hammond organ. It's like the Air and Space Museum if you've ever visited and been in one of those capsules. Okay, I'm taking care to make sure that it's not touching the start motor and it's not actually on this belt where the oil from the tone generator can cause this plastic cable to degrade. So just want to make sure I lift it off of there. I'll probably use a zip tie up in there just to keep it out of the way.
tip I like to use is before I get started taking something apart, I always stop and take a picture. Another tip for the shop is to get a nice soldering iron. Now what that'll do is let you control the temperature, but it also warms up very quickly. So I've just turned this on and plugged this up and it's almost ready to uh, desolder. Another great tool to have is a desoldering tool. So it just creates a vacuum once you heat the solder joint and it'll suck off all the solder you want to get out of there. So here we go. Helps to pull the plunger back. Connect the long black and red twisted pair to the GG terminals. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect these. I'm cut these to length and strip them with my wire strippers. Another thing to consider, when you're making a solder joint, solder is only meant to reinforce the mechanical connection that you've already put in place. So you wanna make sure that the wire is tight on whatever you're connecting it to. You're not actually using the solder to make the connection, you're just using the solder to reinforce the mechanical connection that's already there. You also never wanna blow on a solder joint. You just wanna let it air cool. strips here. I never really like just taking wire, splicing it in there with screw terminals. And again, use your pliers to make that solid mechanical connection. You're going to reinforce the solder. Attach yellow wire to any ground point on the organ preamp. All right, that'll be a good ground point right there. That'll be a good ground point. Or that would be a good ground point. All right, so we'll use that. We'll use. Now I would much rather use heat shrink than a wire nut, so just make sure you put your heat shrink on before you solder the joint. And again, you never want to blow on it. wire tie just to make sure it's nice and clean and out of the way. I'm just going to use some zip ties to uh, freshen it up.
fired up. All right, so I followed the instructions that came with the kit and then got to the end after I'd cleaned everything up and realized that the B3 has a five pin connector female and the 122 has a six pin connector male. So you need a six pin to five pin cable. Now it turns out I actually had one in the shop. I just had to find it, but I didn't get to that point to realize it until I contacted Bill at BB Oregon. And uh, the guy gave me his phone number uh, when I placed an order and then I was able to call him and he was able to talk me through it. But what I discovered actually as I was getting ready to modify the cable that I already have is that a lot of the insulation in the cable was kind of cracked and falling apart. Now I, this is a mint condition B3. I don't want it to burn up in a fire. So what I need to do now is take the cable that I have and cut it back to find good solid insulation that's not cracked and dry rotted and uh, make new cable ends. Now I do have here uh, in the shop a lot of Amphenol connectors that will work for this. But if you get to this point and you need the right cable and you need the right connectors, make sure you contact Bill at BB Oregon and he'll get you going. As for me, I'm going right now. I love it. Perfect. Super clean, pretty easy project. And uh, yeah, here we go. So here's what it sounds like.